Okay, this is Dr. Muthuswamy recording and today we are going to prove mathematically and of course using physics that light is a form of electromagnetic radiation and I'm sure there are many references for this but the reference that I found that was uh, that had a very beautiful proof is a student's guide to Maxwell's equations by Dan Fleish, I'm sorry if I spelled his last name wrong, uh, Cambridge University Press. But uh, basically the idea is we're going to, so here is the outline of the proof, okay. We're going to look at light uh, traveling in vacuum, okay, traveling in vacuum satisfies the wave equation okay. so the wave equation the classical wave equation is d squared oops I'm gonna write it this way d squared f d squared phi I just said f it's d squared phi dx squared is 1 over c squared d squared phi dt squared okay where phi of x comma t is the amplitude of our wave okay and so what we're going to do is since light is traveling vacuum so let me this is number one number two we're going to assume that uh, there are no free charges no free charges so in other words this implies that the charge density the volume charge density is zero coulombs per meter cubed the third thing is the current density j is zero or amps per meter squared and basically what we're going to do is we're now to start the proof so here's the proof we are going to how do I put this you basically we have light traveling in vacuum so we are going to start out with the two dynamical Maxwell's equations so which is curl of E is negative db dt or Faraday's law where E is the electric field in intensity with dimensions volt per meter and B is the magnetic flux density with dimensions of Tesla I'll just write it as T Okay, and we're going to use basically the differential forms. So, in other words, let me say recall that this is true, and the curl of B is mu naught times J, where B mu naught is the magnetic permeability of free space plus epsilon naught d e d t. Okay, so here are the units of current density or amps per meter squared. So let me write it up here. Okay whoops squared okay so now we whenever we prove something we should know what we are trying to get so what we need actually is the Laplacian of the electric field intensity is mu naught epsilon naught d squared e dt squared okay so and the Laplacian of the magnetic flux density is mu naught epsilon naught d squared b dt squared so basically this is equal so basically we'll derive both of these equations that independently that is how about this so that's equation one up here okay the wave equation let's call this let's call this equation two let's call this equation three so and let's call these set of equations number four so I'll put this in red that 
basically 2 and 3 will imply 4 okay so that's what we need and comparing 4 to 1 we see that c is 1 over square root of mu naught epsilon naught okay so that's the speed of light and this is what made maxwell great among a lot of other things that he was able to not only complete what is probably the first successful field theory that is um, the electromagnetic field but he was able to predict the velocity of the speed of light okay and if you actually google search for maxwell's paper it's available for free from the royal publisher the, uh, from cambridge okay so whatever and if you go through pay, go to page 48 of his paper you can see that's exactly what he states he states in this sentence that these electromotive and magnetic forces must be conceived it's amazing in like the language back in 1865 so must be conceived to be reversed twice in every vibration of light so and there you have it okay and in order to do this what we will need is uh, uh, some results from vector calculus but they're not that difficult to understand so let's get started in the sense um, let's do this now recall now we should know that uh, what we need is basically a cross b cross c is equal to a times b dot c minus I'm going to write it like this and you should know this results from vector calculus a dot uh, b times c that's what we'll use okay now notice that the dimensions agree that on the left hand side you have a vector on the right hand side this is a scalar but it you're basically multiplying a vector by a scalar so you have a vector minus another vector so this is good what we're going to do is we're going to basically say this okay for example consider Look at a simpler example. Consider that you have a cross. Um, let's see, how do I? Let's do this. A dot a cross c is obviously zero. Okay, that's because vector a is perpendicular, uh, or a cross c is perpendicular to a, so the dot product of it is zero. And this basically, I mean, you can think about it like this, but I'll put this in quotes. Uh, so in other words, let me put it even better. Uh, similarly, so it's similar, but not exactly equal to, if we can translate this to vector calculus, what I'm getting at. If you look at the divergence of the curl, so you can see that the del is similar to A, and you have a vector field uh, instead of C, let me put F, okay? This is basically zero. Okay. So it's a very similar result. So you can read this as del dot del cross f is equal to zero. It's uh, again a similar idea. Therefore, we can say that, let's see, so this is number five. Thus, similar to five, this is basically what we're going to use. We're going to look at the curl of the curl of a vector field and just reading this off you're basically going to get the gradient of the divergence okay minus so when you get del dot del you get the laplacian okay of f so hopefully you can notice let me underline this in a different color so you can see how similar these two are so here's that here's that well, let's start with this okay and then uh, let's do it even better one better let's use different colors so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use well I've already used red so I'm gonna use purple so here so this is a right there okay and then here is C 
and hopefully I have one more color to distinguish and I do and there you have it okay so that's the idea again and why do I need this particular hopefully mine saves and it doesn't crash so let's see save 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 so why do I need this particular vector calculus relationship because looking at equation 4 which is what I want to get you can see I have the Laplacian on the left hand side okay and so this is how you do proofs again or anything in general that you want to know what you're trying to get at this is what you're going to get at okay and we should also know our basic theory so here it is so now looking at equations 2, 3, and 4, you can see to get the Laplacian, I can take the curl of these two equations, which in turn imply I should know what the curl of the curl, I should know the, what the curl, yeah, of the curl is. Okay. So let's go to the next page. Therefore, uh, let's look at, let's do this, let's go back to black, and let's take the curl of 2, okay? So therefore, the curl of equation 2 implies I'll have the curl of the curl of E is negative the curl of dB dt, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, apply the vector identity on the left-hand side. So I'll get the divergence, sorry, the gradient of the divergence minus the Laplacian of E, okay, equals, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is the curl, I'm going to take the curl inside the derivative, okay, so I'm going to assume that vector field B is sufficiently smooth in order for us to do this, okay. So now let's look at this equation. I have my the Laplacian of E here, this is great, okay, and what I need to eliminate are these two expressions. Now, this one, the curl of B, you can say, let me see, I need a mu naught here and an epsilon naught, aha, but curl of B can be written as mu naught times this expression, the Ampere-Maxwell law, basically. Therefore, from 3, what I'm going to do so I'm going to keep this as the gradient of the divergence minus the Laplacian of E is minus DDT of what? Mu naught times J plus epsilon naught, the partial derivative of, uh, I mean, the rate of change of uh, the electric field instantly with respect to time. Now we know that j equals 0 by assumption, okay? So now looking at this, we can see that, well, if j equals 0, that's great. You get negative mu naught epsilon naught d squared e dt squared, which is beautiful, which is what the right-hand side of what we want is. But then how do I eliminate? So now we got to think. Okay, so I don't want this expression. So in other words, this has to be zero, but how? Going back, you can see, wait a minute, I made one more assumption that there are no free charges, rho equals zero. So let's add Coulomb per meter cubed, okay? So how do I use that here? How do I get rho in here? And then you can think about, wait a minute, Gauss's law says that the divergence of E is rho over epsilon naught and rho is zero. Beautiful. Therefore, the gradient of this is zero. So what we basically get is what we want. So we will get with the negative signs canceling. d squared e dt squared. Voila. Okay. So we're done with the first expression and now we can easily see that, wait, if I can go from 2 to here, then using 3, I should be able to get, incorporating 2, the second um, equation in terms of the magnetic flux density. And 
these two equations combined imply that light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. Okay, so let's finish that up. So and you can see where this is going in the sense, uh, let me save this so I don't lose like work. Uh, so and now, I'll, uh, now I'll just write similarly. Okay. Similarly, if we take the curl of 3, and obviously I'm going to use now the fact that here I used Gauss's law. So here I'm going to use the, you could say the Gauss's law for magnetic fields or the divergence of the magnetic flux density is 0. But let's not jump ahead of ourselves. Let's just do B is mu naught, so I'm just going to do curl of j plus epsilon naught times ddt, the curl of e, okay, so let me do it this way, so now I'm going to do the gradient of the divergence of the magnetic flux density, and this is the Laplacian of the magnetic flux density, which is mu naught, so now let me just plug this in, in the sense, I know that uh, J is 0 by assumption. And then uh, basically the curl of E is minus dB dt, Faraday's law. Okay. So what we'll get is mu naught epsilon naught, even I put a nice implied sign, d squared b dt squared, and here this implies uh, divergence of magnetic flux density is zero. So in other words, let's see, I'm missing, oops, I'm missing a negative sign here. So here's the negative sign, so it should be a negative sign there, and voila, so you have the Laplacian of B is mu naught epsilon naught d squared B dt squared. And there you have it, a QED, quality naught demonstratum. Okay, so to recap, we have given you a simple proof courtesy of the book, A Student's Guide to Maxwell's Equations by Dan Fleisch. A very simple proof that light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. Okay? That is, both these equations uh, can be obtained from Maxwell, instead of four Maxwell's equations, but we basically started out with the quote unquote uh, dynamic. Uh, I mean, we started out from uh, electric, uh, the dynamics, uh, the dynamical Maxwell's equations. And in the process, we also use the static Maxwell's equations, that is Gauss's law for electric fields and Gauss's law for magnetic fields. Uh, but these two equations finally imply by comparing to the classic wave equation, that C is 1 over square root of mu naught epsilon naught. And again, to highlight the genius that is Maxwell, that is one of the many things that made him a genius, that he was able to use his theory to prove that light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. So in addition to completing uh, Ampere's law, that is giving this addition, adding this additional term so that Ampere's law is applicable to time varying situations as well, Maxwell was able to use that to prove that light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. Okay, so, yeah, that's about it. Uh, see you in the next lecture.